Unfortunately, neck and back pain is common with parents, with new parents. When we're holding the babies and lifting them and in and out of the crib and in and out of the car, I see a lot of it. When parents-to-be are coming into my office, I prepare them for what I call new parent necks and new parent backs and steps they can take immediately to be aware and to prevent the problems. So the first thing is neck pain with babies. We see this a lot. So particularly moms that are nursing and feeding, holding the baby, head is down for long extended periods of time, right? And after the course of a few weeks or a few months, moms are coming in with a cranked up neck. Well, let's say it goes like this. Mom is home, dad, dad comes back from work. Dad grabs the baby, wants to spend some time with the baby, right dads? And then they're holding the baby, maybe feeding and just holding it with their head down like this particularly in those early weeks, early weeks, couple of months. And then I see this strain. So now you're aware that's a simple postural thing. Of course, feeding and breastfeeding, you're gonna be down like this, that's fine. Afterward, you have to undo that posture with the exercises that you've seen me demonstrating for years and years on this show. And of course, the first one is stretch your shoulders back, stretch the neck back to your comfort level, to your comfort level and hold for 10 to 20 seconds and then relax. So after you're done feeding, holding, whatever, baby's down, you do your stretch here. Shoulders back, head back, hold for 10 or 20 seconds, and there you go. And then you can just do general stretches for your neck. You can go side to side like so, maybe three or four or half a dozen of these, if these are appropriate for your neck, as long as you don't have any pain. You can do some twists as well, just to loosen up that neck after holding your darling baby for a while. I do not recommend neck circles. A lot of people that ends up being a problem. So maybe do the three exercises I'm talking about here. This one where you pull the head and shoulders back and hold 10 to 20 seconds. And then you might do four or five of these morning and night or after long um, stints of holding the child and then some twists like that as well, okay? So that usually takes care of that neck problem. Extremely common, easy to undo when you're taking breaks and so forth, okay? Now the lower back. This was prompted to me with a good friend of mine who came to visit during the Boston Marathon, and he actually ran the Boston Marathon. And he and his wife had their first baby uh, last year. And he said, you know, I thought a lot about you when we had the newborn, because uh, early on I was doing a lot of the lifting, and he said, oh, I could really feel my lower back starting to crank up in and out of the crib, in and out of the crib. So he really started concentrating on his posture when he was doing his lifting. And he said, I headed off at the pass, I caught myself early on, make, making sure I'm do, using good lifting techniques, and I didn't get a back blow up. And he said, one of my friends who had a baby not that much earlier than he did, wrote him and said, how's your back doing? I mean, my back is killing me. And they already had a nine, nine month old, and my friend's baby was like a couple of months old, something like that. He says, you know, I'm doing okay because I'm doing some good lifting techniques and so forth. So, crib, it's easy to bend and lift and pull up, right? Car seat, infant car seat into the car. It's easy to do this and strain your back. And just simply bending over and lifting, right? You've got your two options. No, number one is, of course, a general squat. And the general squat is you separate your feet apart, and if you're going into the crib, you squat down, lift, and come up. Anytime you have to go down, you separate those feet apart, and you go into a squat as much as you can, okay? So squatting. Put the pressure into the legs, Keep it from bending at the waist. We're trying to prevent this, okay? The second way is you can't squat and then reach into a car. It's not quite as efficient. So then we get into the hip hinge, the hip hinge which I've demonstrated, which is this. Swinging your, swinging your hips forward, rear end goes out backward like this and up and down. You can do this one anywhere, and I've demonstrated this on the show before as well. So you lift up the, lift up the the infant car seat, or you already have it in your, your hands, and then you're going into the car. If you do it like this, that's gonna be trouble. But if you do a hip hinge, notice the swivel action. The swivel action, once you start doing that, it's gonna take pressure off of the lower back and put it into the glute muscles and the legs. This hip hinge, start practicing now. You'll get that down quickly, and that's gonna help you. In a tight quarters, 
when you can't get into a squat position, a hip hinge will work well, even getting lower into the crib to lift your baby. Okay? So either a hip hinge or a squat anywhere, anytime is going to help you so much to preventing neck and back pain in you as parents. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Thank you.